introduce yourself bullshit. Like, let's just fucking talk. People will figure it out. All right. Sounds good. All right. Here we go. All right. And we're live. Uh, welcome to Friday Night on Sunday, the Vagabond Chef podcast. We're here on Facebook Live uh, every Sunday night at 8 p.m., excepting maybe next Sunday, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, I'm joined this evening by my friend and chef, John Grabowski. John, thanks for coming and joining on, on here with me, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, brother. So we got to work together this past week after, what, probably a 20-year uh, hiatus of working together professionally, at least, um, at um, Community Kitchen Pittsburgh, um, and did a multi-course meal there for uh, about 40-some guests, I think, is what we ended up with. Something about that, yep. Oh, Amanda, uh, my fiance is chiming in and says, nice to meet you, John. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I I was telling Amanda, actually, at the end of the day, let's see, the, the dinner was on Wednesday. So at the end of the day, on Tuesday, after we prepped together all day, at, you know, at one point, I think around two or three o'clock, uh, you just turned to me where we were standing next to each other prepping. And you said, man, it's just so good to be in the kitchen with you again. And uh, I got such a fucking kick in the ass by that. Just it felt so good to hear that. And uh, it it was a really feel good day for me, man. Same, man. That was great. What has it been like um, being in that environment? Because it's like, it's like a professional kitchen. It's not, you know, you have students, but it's not like, um, it's not like a culinary school, really. Like you're, you're executing, you're, you're cooking food for people. How, how has that been? It's been different. Um, you know, uh, you, well, we produce about uh, 1700 meals a day. Um, and it's uh, a bunch of different menus. So there's probably like five different menus that we produce each day yeah. for the 1,700 people. So that is an extra difficult part of the process of getting the food out. But um, um, as far as, you know, it not being like culinary school, it's it's not like a culinary school. What we're, re what we're really trying to do is trying to train people um, just how to function in a, in a busy kitchen during the mm -hmm. day. Um, you know, we're not trying to necessarily teach them the mother sauces, or we're not necessarily trying to teach them, you know, how to do, you know, uh, five-star Michelin cuisine. We're trying to teach them how to function in a kitchen because at the end of the day, like really what working in a kitchen is, is an opportunity to like uh, give you uh, a career, right. you know, any, any, anyone can cook. Right. Right. You know? So we just try to like, give people the keys you know what i mean yeah it's, it's it's not very hard but um you know we're, we're just basically working with people that have lots of barriers to employment that, that um uh you know might not necessarily have a resume you know what i mean yeah. or yeah. any um relevant job experience so we're just trying to give them a little bit of experience and give them a little bit of a taste of what it's like to be in a professional kitchen mm -hmm. well and it very much felt that way like i I got caught up several times with just the the buzz and there's so much going on and it's a good size kitchen. Um, you know, there's, there's several stations and uh, you got combi ovens in there. You got double stack convection ovens, uh, grill, griddle. Uh, I didn't see fryers. I don't think, did I, were there fryers? Yeah, the fryer now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of things happening. Um, and I got caught up with like just the whole hum of the kitchen and, and forgot that I was, you know, with, students a few times and dropped a few too many f-bombs probably but it just kind of <laughs> got don't. soaked up into that atmosphere you know yeah yeah they, they, they don't mind it's <laughs> it, it's a lot going on every single yeah. day and, and it's 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 very hard to like kind of juggle all of that and at the same time you know kind of manage the business yeah. um that's the that, that that's the real challenge but you know it is what it is you know mm -hmm. we, we get through it every day yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I had a, I had a few primer questions uh, in my back pocket, uh, just to to push things along with us. And I, I, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, at the end of a long day of prep, uh, what hurts the worst for you? Feet, knees, back, or hands? Feet, hands down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, feet. <laughs> yeah, feet can be rough. Good yeah. shoes are, are an absolute must. I, I was so thankful for Chef Tony letting me use her station that was a little taller because man that made a huge world of difference for my back it's great bro we got to get you one of those tables no doubt dude Definitely. yeah i always used to joke that when i when i had my own place i would have all high counters and uh 
not you know not everyone's as tall as me and i i kind of got to do what's best for everybody not just for myself but to have yeah. to have one one spot to do that was that, that needs to happen <laughs> that's great bro <laughs> So, uh, you know, you've done this like your whole adult life, right? Um, yeah, yeah. I started cooking at uh, about 26 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah. we met We met at West Liberty in, I guess, what, 1999, 2000? Well, let's see. I graduated culinary school in 99. So I did my externship in 2000. So I would I would say it would be like 01 or 02. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It, it had to have been 01 because like, I graduated in 02. Okay. So yeah, it would have been 01. Yeah. Because I think we met right after you graduated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah it was, that was my first job outside of my externship. Well, and we talked about it uh, in person, but one of the things that's always resonated with me was walking into that kitchen and just feeling like a sense of belonging and 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 I've felt that in every kitchen I've walked into since you know it's like we're all broken the same way if that makes sense yeah 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 that, that's that that's that's been something that's always attracted me to the kitchens and like you know uh having uh read Anthony Bourdain's books mm-hmm. and like you know like followed Anthony Bourdain's career for as long as I have um you know that that sense of the kitchen being a place for the misfits mm-hmm. for the people that like don't necessarily have a place like that has really resonated with me and and having this kitchen where i'm at now where um we're actually taking people who have barriers to employment people who like really are struggling in life um and being able to give back uh the gift of cooking is is just so so special and important to me you know mm-hmm. yeah it means a lot yeah yeah it does and it's it's you know what i found uh after working with you at west liberty and as i went on through my life was uh that was that was across the board like no matter what where i went or uh you know what happened if i needed a gig um you know i could walk into a kitchen if i showed up on time if i put you know put the effort in um uh, you know it was it worked great you know and like I, I remember when a couple months into working there i got shifted out of pots and pans because I started as a dishwasher I got shifted out of pots and pans onto like the receiving line for the trays and stuff and I really didn't like it I don't know if you remember this or not but I I used to actually think I was going to get you uh divorced because you would come over to my house afterwards and we'd have some beers and sometimes you didn't make it home do you remember that I'm sorry you were breaking up say again oh I'm sorry I was afraid I was going to get you in trouble with your wife because sometimes we go back to my house and have drinks after shift and sometimes you wouldn't make it home (laughs) but yeah I did that I did all all those mistakes I made on my own yeah (laughs) I'm very good at making my own mistakes but uh, at the end of the day like no it's 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 a camaraderie like honestly like you know we we uh we hit it off back then, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and it, I, I, I've been the same way in every kitchen, as you were just saying, like where, you know, I can go from one kitchen to the next. And like, I, I always find my place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's, like you said, as long as you show up, you, you put in a good day's work and, you know, you, you put in a little bit of effort, you know, you, you fit in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's, and that, that that can be anybody. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter like where you come from. It doesn't matter like your your race, your gender, your sexuality. Your it right. doesn't matter anything, as long as you show up and you want to work hard and you want to put out a good product. Man, we accept you in the kitchen. Right. And that, right. Yeah, it's really about product. who you are and not what you are. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was one of those nights after after we closed the kitchen down and we were having some drinks and I was like man, I really, really don't like being in the receiving, doing the trays and like feeding the conveyor belt. And I was saying every tray I put in the conveyor belt, I was saying, fuck this job, fuck this job, fuck this job. Every time, everyone, I was like, I just hated it, man. I, the guys that were back there with me were super negative and it was just a really not a cool atmosphere. And at least the way I remember it and the way I've told the story many, many times is you were like, well, shit, man, we can't lose you. Like you work too hard. Like what, what do we got to do? Like, how can we make this work? And I was like, I don't know, teach me how to cook. And that's how I started on the grill line, at least, at least in my memory. And I was told by story many, many times over the t- past 20 some years. And then I started out cooking. Well, I mean, that's how I've, you know, 
we we find people man you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? right we, we you know uh i don't know i don't know about that story because i don't remember because it's been so long but uh right. i do know that like when i find someone in, in the kitchen who like really works hard and like is willing to go the extra mile and like has that work ethic that positive work ethic i do whatever i can to sink my claws into them and keep them mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like we, we depend on each other and we need each other. And you know, if, if you're good, you're going to be with me, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and and I've, sh- I know you've formed a lot of those relationships over the years and your experiences as I've gotten to as well. And it's, I'm really glad that our relationship is one of those also, you know? Yeah. Same. Yeah. Um. So uh, do you have, who else do you have lined up or do you guys have anyone on the docks for uh, guest chef spots? You're going to do more of those at the kitchen, right? Um, yeah, right now I don't have May covered. I, I, I have an idea who might, uh, a chef that might come in. Um, not, I, it's not someone I know personally, but uh, I definitely have June covered. June's going to be um, Chef Shane from uh, Point Bruges Cafe. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a, a restaurant here in Pittsburgh. There's a uh, Point Bruges and Park Bruges um, owned by uh, a good friend of mine, Jesse Seeger. Uh, mm-hmm. So he'll be there in, um, in June. But um, yeah, as of that, that's pretty much all I have lined up thus far this year. I'm still working very hard to fill out the other seven, eight, eight months, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Year. But, uh, you know, working towards it, we'll get yeah. more outstanding chefs in there. I'm sure. Well, I'm sure it'll come together in the, uh... You know, like I said, if I if there's ever a time I can come up and help out again or be a part of what you all have going on, I was super impressed and just super honored to be a part of it for sure. Oh man, it was my honor, man. I <laughs> I, I I couldn't tell you I was glowing on Thursday all yeah. day long. Man. I, oh, I just man. I felt so good about like the whole the the way the whole thing came together and the way that um our our uh, lives and and careers have uh you know crossed paths once again. It's really made a really huge impact on me, and I, yeah, I really yeah. Appreciate same, same for sure. I think actually, um, I'm pretty sure we met when I did the Vagabond Chef Tour across the country and I was in Pittsburgh, like probably August 2013. I think we reconnected then at some point, just yeah. briefly. Yeah. Um, and then all we, went you know, out with squared that night, didn't we? Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, we went 8 at East Squared. Yeah, yeah, which was an amazing place. Yeah. Yeah, I, I miss E Squared, and, and I've, uh, it's been awesome to follow Kate's career, Chef Kate Romaine, and what she's doing. Is she still doing the Black Radish Catering Company now? She is. That's yeah. awesome. She's They're a badass. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a really cool experience to to check out that place and what what you all had going on there. And I loved you had the uh, the Sunday supper down in the basement with the long, you didn't have pews to sit in or something like that? Uh, it, was, no, it, was, it was just long tables, mm. like one long, it was a 40 foot long table yeah that was super super cool yeah great no, food there. Incredible. incredible her 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 uh k romaine's influence on me is uh something that um i i i cherish and that I'll, I'll never forget like she has been nothing but uh the best to me and she's a, a wonderful chef yeah 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 I, i've been super impressed with with her as a person and her food um and just she's got such an amazing personality and like uh like total total hard ass but at the same time like positive and just just you know like glowing maybe too much i don't know but like she's just <laughs> she's so easy to be around i can't imagine um what it must be like like deep in the weeds on a friday night uh i don't know if that you know if she ever gets harsh or snaps but every time i've seen her man she, she like makes me smile and makes my day better <laughs> i still i i still have a uh uh it's a meeting it's meeting notes for a meeting we had at east squared where um the the top bullet point on the meeting said no more throwing crocs <laughs> <laughs> like like little serving crocs or no, shoes? like your shoes <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to know what it's like being in the weeds with kate there you go well you better better croc. than uh some two pound china dish or something i guess or you know dance goes are heavy so (laughs) man it can get pretty heated uh you know when when things go sideways or you're coming at you from every direction and you know you're putting your everything you got into that you know that moment like i i think you know we alluded to this before we went live and kind of like that 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 mentality of 
I'm only as good as the last plate I put in the window, you know, sort of thing. And like that constant need to, um, I don't want to say perfection because that that sounds a little over the top, but like just turn out, I don't know, perfect food. I don't, I don't know. I guess maybe it is perfection, man, but that's a lot of pressure and we put it on ourselves. Well, yeah, that's just it. We we put it on ourselves, but we put it on ourselves because like we, we have, um, we, we have standards, you know what I mean? And if we don't hold ourselves to our own high standards, then we can't expect our cooks to hold themselves to the same standard. So like, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough. You beat yourself up a lot. Um, when you're, you're, you feel like you're not performing to the best that you can, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I mean, you know, sometimes you have to give yourself a little bit of leeway, you know, sometimes things just don't work out the way that they're supposed to, or like, sometimes you won't have a crucial ingredient that you really think you need, or, you know, at the end of the day, though, like, as long as you do your best and put out the best product that you possibly can, you just, you gotta, you, you gotta give yourself some slack. Yeah. Yeah. You know? oh, and that's the voice of an experienced chef, man. I, I know um, when, when we were both younger, we, we didn't have that balance as well, you know? No. <laughs> um, and, and I've, and even recently with, with chefs that even more experienced than you and I both are, um, I, I've seen people have things not go right on, in, in the middle of service and, they're beating themselves up for it weeks later because you know that we put our heart and soul into every plate and you know sometimes especially when you're working with different equipment um or or in a different scenario and and things just don't go the way you're used to it it is it's really hard a hard pill to swallow um you know i know i had a moment during our dinner where um things didn't go the way i expected and, and i beat myself up for hours until until we actually cut into that eye round steak and I saw there's, there's some pink in there. I was, I, my butt was puckered, man. I was, I was upset and, and worried. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, like I said, like you have to give yourself that, that little bit of slack. You know, I, I learned, um, having done catering for about seven years, uh, um, and it was all out catering, um, because we didn't have a hall. So we always would, uh, show up at like people's homes or at businesses or whatever. And, and the equipment was what it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you knew what you might be walking into. Sometimes you didn't. Um, and sometimes you didn't get what you expected, even though you thought you knew what you were walking into, but you know, you, you, you learn to adapt, Yeah, you know? Yeah. You, and that's like one of the, that's, I think that's one of the hallmarks of a really good chef is like when you are able to like, you know, you're faced with an issue that you don't expect um, and you don't have a lot of time to fix it, but somehow you figure out a way to get it done. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. That's I totally that. agree. That's what takes it to the next level. Mm-hmm. And, and sometimes you work with people who are like so super innovative when it comes to those types of things. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I think we were talking before we we, we went live about um, my sous chef, Patrick, from the uh, Science Center. Um, he... He uh, a lot of times will come up with solutions or or offer me ideas on different ways to do things that I would not necessarily have thought of. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm kind of like, no, nah, that's not the way I would usually do it. But they're fantastic ideas, mm-hmm. you know, and it's that it's that kind of like that being able to, like, take yourself out of the situation and and, and you know, think of it a different way. That, that makes us good that makes us adaptable and makes us like more successful with what we do you know right right absolutely man and i don't want to pull the curtain back too far for anyone that's watching who uh who isn't part of uh you know this the service industry you know, who hasn't worked in the back of the house but uh shit goes wrong all the time and you never know the guests never know yeah and and that's that's what it takes that's what i, I like i was telling you about uh being out in idaho and and the biggest thing I learned working out there was how to get in that moment in service when you're like, oh, my God, we are fucked right now. Like, everything is wrong. And it doesn't matter. Like, no one's going home. Those tickets aren't going away. Everyone still needs to get food that's as perfect as possible. And you just you just learned how to push through that and and keep going. Yeah, I think it was um, I think it was uh, Daniel Ballou. I'm, I may be wrong, but um, I think it was Daniel Ballou who says uh, that it does. It, it's not how many mistakes you make. It's how you handle them or mm-hmm. a good restaurant is not defined 
by how many mistakes it's made. It's it's defined by how it handles them. Because mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. we all make mistakes. And mistakes happen constantly. Right. But you know, and it's it's <laughs> there's another quote that I I got from uh, the really famous guy named Vince Lombardi. <laughs> yeah, me, he is semi famous. Uh, <laughs> who told me that um you know never never let the guests see you sweat mm-hmm. you know like it, as soon as they see that you're panicking mm-hmm. they know something's wrong right so you know like especially if you're in if you're front facing in any way if um you you just can never let the guests see you you know going oh shit oh shit oh shit right right you know? and, and if you're it's in a like, leadership position especially you can't let your staff see it either yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's one of the worst things you can do is actually like flip out on the yeah, line. Yeah. You know, especially as a leader. Right. You know, then you set that tone for everyone underneath of you. Yep. Uh, my my best friend and brother from another mother, Jeremy, uh, chimed in a little while ago, just saying that all in all, and especially now, uh, just plain hard work is hard to find and kudos to us both. Uh, Jerry, huh. thanks for joining us, man. Uh, Jeremy also went to school at West Liberty as well. And then he found out, he, I think he found out he was too smart for West Liberty. And he went on and did other amazing things and is still an amazing part of my life. A uh, really good fellow. And then my mom joined in with us. Uh, mom, sorry about all the cuss words. Don't yell at me. Um, but she says, be like a duck. Everything looks peaceful, but uh, everything looks peaceful, but no one sees its feet going furiously under the water. <laughs> yeah that's a good way to look at it yeah yeah and that's that's very very true um so let's see what what should we talk about now how about music you and i have a similar love of oh we got jane Mayer that's chiming in uh listening proud of you brother thank you thank you very much for listening that's my sister oh cool way to go jane <laughs> hi jane um so you and i have a, a i think very similar taste in music but i'm i'm most curious about uh, music in the kitchen. And that seems to have changed a lot in recent years now that everyone's carrying around a jukebox with a speaker in their pocket. Do yeah. you still see that where like there's how like like house music for the kitchen or whatever, or is it like individual pockets? You know, Matt, uh, the, we have a gigantic speaker, a mm-hmm. Bluetooth speaker. Like, I mean, it pumps at work. And uh, the, the music that the staff typically listens to i i don't necessarily care for I, however i can just shut it out yeah you know what i mean it's just to yeah. me I, I i don't care but um i don't know man i i i kind of kind of prefer a quiet kitchen yeah you no know, i mean i can't kind of came up in those kind of kitchens where there was no music but mm-hmm. you know then, then there are kitchens that i've come up in where the there was like happy bouncy you know inspiring music <laughs> going on but you know, I, I can take it or leave it, honestly. Yeah. 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 I think we, we, we talked about this uh, prepping for the event, how we're both a little more quiet in the kitchen than, uh, you know, some some chefs are kind of over the top personalities and they're always putting English on every plate that hits the window and flipping their pans around and they're being loud and they're telling jokes. And like, I can get pretty goofy in the kitchen, but I tend to just put my head down at work. Yeah. 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 I mean, I like, I, I feel like kind of with this with this job that I just took at the community kitchen, like I kind of feel like I I have to be a little bit more front facing and mm-hmm. a little bit more kind of like representing the kitchen. Um, but typically, I'm I'm the type of person that likes to just be in the background. I I don't like to necessarily be out there. I I, I have a little bit of like uh, kind of um, anxiety when it comes to like you know. Uh, dealing with people face to face. I'm I'm more of a nuts and bolts type of dude, you know, and I like to stay in the back and I like to keep my head down and I like to just, you know, concentrate on the food. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my focus in, in the kitchen normally. And I, I have a, I have a, I have a hard time being that person. I can, mm-hmm. you know, but I just, it, it it's, it's a stretch for me. Right. Yeah. No, I understand that. What do, what do you think about the, the current, you know, kind of climate where chefs are, you know, like we're like kind of rock stars now, you know, like people, people are really into, they want to hear from the chef. They want to see the chef, you know um, it's been, you know, 20 years or so now, but open kitchens have become a thing where you can see the action happening where it used to be, 
you were shoved into the furthest back corner of the building and no one ever saw or heard you. You know, that's been a huge change. Yeah, it's been a giant change. Well, I mean, it's, it's it, that, that whole change has evolved like throughout my career. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of when I started, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> kind of when I started was when the Food Network pretty much was starting up, mm -hmm. you know, so that's when we first started to recognize uh, chef celebrities. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, I, I, uh, although that that did inspire me you know what i mean that definitely gave me a lot of like inspiration as far as like wow these guys are really wildly successful and they're creating this amazing food and like they have these like cool careers and and you know all the perks that go along with it but for me i was always like that's not you know i, I want all that success and i want all that you know happiness and you know i want to create that amazing food and all that kind of stuff but i just want to I want my food to speak for itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think I necessarily need to be out there and be that in front of the camera type of guy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? I, I, I respect those. I respect people like, uh, like, uh, you know, Gordon Ramsay, let's just say, or, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, um, uh, uh, shit, um, the names are escaping me, but the celebrity chefs, um, I respect them. And I, I think that the, what they're doing is amazing and they're representing us, really well mm -hmm. but on the other hand i'm just not that guy yeah <laughs> yeah that. i get that but you do you do it well um you you know you spoke at the dinner that we worked on and i thought you spoke very very well you, and you definitely uh you know you have a good personality in front of the people and that's not that's not always easy to do especially when you're stepping well so let me let me let me put it up like this uh a good friend of mine uh did a training once for my staff and and he talked about gender communications nathan blake really great, uh, um, great communicator, great uh, marketing guy. He and I lived together at West Liberty, actually. Um, uh, wonderful writer. And he did this training for my staff, uh, equating the front of the house uh, to feminine um, communication tendencies and the back of the house to masculine. Uh, and, and that meaning of the, the feminine uh, sort of, of communication is relationship based you know and that's very much what a server is it's about relationship and the back of the house is very masculine task-based uh communication and you see it happen and conflict at the window all the time uh especially if there's no expo or in the situation where you know you get the server to come up and they do the little lean and you're like um chef I had a problem on table 26 and this happened and then that happened and this other thing happened. And meanwhile, the chef is just boiling and like, just tell me what I need to do. Yeah. Right. Um, so all that to say, to step out of the kitchen to in front of the staff, in front of the guests and switch from task based to relationship based like that is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Agreed. It's like, <laughs> uh, uh, do, do, I think I don't know if we talked about this, but uh, it's like uh, the the um, the thing they call co code switching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like that. When you're with that, like yeah. So like you're 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 code switching basically. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you know, it's it's something that like if you if you can do it and do it well, you can you know you'll be successful at it. But if if you don't do it well, you end up kind of looking like a complete asshole you yeah, know what I mean? right. yes absolutely you end up like looking condescending or yeah. or you know um like mocking you know and so if you can code switch and that's that's not just in kitchens but if you can code switch well then you can it's it's a great way of communicating if you if you even have the smallest of missteps when you try to code switch you look like an idiot mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know yeah, the 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 most marked time that that happened for me, it was the worst interview I ever gave. And it was right after um, the show I was on on Food Network dropped. And I was in between head chefs. So my my head chef that I had for years was he had moved, he had to move on to another opportunity. Uh, and no, you know, that's cool. I totally get it. No problem. I had a new guy coming in, but there was a gap like that two week gap where, you know, we we got him hired right at the end of my last guy's thing. And and I had to step on the line for that. And man, my line legs are weak. I, I haven't worked on the line for years. Um, 
So I'm trying to 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 head the line and and handle that that inside expo, and we were just getting our butts handed to us. And after a particularly busy lunch, the local news station came in to do an interview, I, I guess surrounding the show or something. And uh, you know, it was like 106, and I walked out of there after having my butt severely handed to me. And I was like, yeah, like we went, I did, I did the thing. I went and I did the thing and now I'm here and now, you know, it's done. You know, like it was absolutely horrible. Like I had, I had no uh, ability to put a, a, a good spin on it. I had no vocabulary. Like it was, it was just absolutely horrible. Okay. I think it was so bad. I'm pretty sure that they didn't actually air any of the interview. They just kind of summed up like chef Matt says this, you know, <laughs> And it was a, it was that like a complete yeah it was a complete failure of code switching was what it was. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah, but do you, I mean, as like a more, I mean, would you identify yourself as a more introverted person? Do you think or? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm somewhat introverted. Uh, <laughs> I like to keep keep things to myself. Um, yeah, 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 definitely introverted. Yeah, and but I. I and it's crazy because like, you know, you have to be like, and in, in, in my position and your position, you know, we have to be, um, we have to be leaders. We have to uh, um, exude authority. We have to like, you know, just put ourselves out there and really, you know, uh, have a commanding presence in the kitchen, mm -hmm. you know, and it's very, it's, it's, it's tricky to be that, to be that person, like part of your day. And then, the rest of your day or the rest of your life be a little bit more, you know, quiet and, 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 uh, to yourself, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's, it's I, a tricky thing through, through all of the, the traveling that I had done, um, in all the places that I, that I went, I was always very much, I kept to myself, you know, like I would, uh, I remember my first Greyhound trip to New York city. Like I had a black hoodie on and I pulled it down low over my face and I had these pink sunglasses and I just, scowled and i and i didn't want to talk to anybody i was scared like i just didn't i didn't want to talk to anybody i just i wanted to go on this trip but i was terrified of the process right and um i didn't know how to handle myself or or what to do and even when i got more comfortable and uh and more comfortable in my skin and more comfortable being in uncomfortable situations like i was still i was very much like just a quiet wallflower observing everything else happening and when I started the Vagabond Chef, I had to make this deal with myself, like, all right, man, like, you got to talk to people, you know, I had stickers, and I was like, you got to hand out stickers, you got to tell them about the blog, tell them about what you're doing. And uh, it was really super hard. And I'm still am super awkward at times, but it, it's definitely been a good thing for me. Um, and it's pushed me to expand my horizons, kind of. Yeah, I mean, I find that like a lot of the people who I admire for their like, their their public presence, you know, the, the ones that are, uh, that can really speak in front of groups and be very influential. Um, they, uh, for the most part are also introverted there, mm -hmm. but they, they have learned to overcome it and learned how to, um, become more, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but, but they, they become more, um, personable in, in, mm -hmm. in that way. Like, and I, uh, I, I don't know that everyone is like that, but I mm -hmm. do know that a lot of the people like um, that I really feel that have that inside of them, like tend to be more introverted. And it's, it's an interesting like juxtaposition that like some people, um, the, the people that you might never think that they could like be influential and be that, you know, um, you know, front facing type of person that are that person you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They just have it inside them somehow. And I, I don't know, I guess we do, we just learn to overcome the things that, you know, hold us back sometimes. Yeah. 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 For sure. Well, I, I, I think a lot, especially in my role as the vagabond chef. Now I think about this interview I heard on uh thin air with, uh, was it not thin air? What is it called? With Terry gross on the NPR. Um, oh. Fresh air. No, it's not. Well, that's not her spot. It doesn't matter. Care, but I can't remember the. Dish. Yeah. She, so she did this interview with uh, Iggy Pop, Jim, Jim Osterberg. Mm -hmm. And she did this interview with him. And, you know, he's such a super cool down to earth guy, but super talented and like, you know, insane on stage. Like the stuff that that dude has done is just absolutely jaw dropping. And he said at one point, well, Iggy has been very kind to Jim. 
And I really liked that he had that separation of like, this is my persona and this is who I really am. And let's not conflate the two or get confused about who is who or what's what. Yeah, that's a pretty cool way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I talked to my, what's that? I, I was going to say, I wish I could like separate John and Chef John. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah. I mean, that's an interesting way of looking at that. I, I talk to uh, new servers about that sometimes. I'm like, you got to find your, you got to find your, your, like your voice, you know, you're, you're, you're like, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to do this. Like, I, you know, it, it's, it's not a lie. It's, it's part of who you are. You're just accentuating a certain part of who you are and then like letting other parts of yourself like fall to the back burner uh because they're not useful in that moment i think um and you know like when i have to wait tables at my own place i always play the like oh they shouldn't have let me out of the back of the house i'm a horrible server you know like and i just because i do i screw shit up all the time i'm like but you know i'm just the chef you know like what am i doing out here you know and it works like people it makes people chill and they're happy and they're like it's fine don't worry about it you know and i'm like because i really do suck at serving <laughs> Fortunately, I haven't had much opportunity to do that. Thank God. <laughs> right? because, it's hard. Although I, I think I would do exactly what you did. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not supposed to be here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Forgive me. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's super tough to, to deal with the public. And, you know, we're really fortunate at my place that our customers are, you know, 97% amazing. They're super excited to be there um they're they're happy they're in a good moods but you know some places we both work places where you know people are not happy to be there they just want to eat and they're hangry and you know they they're not there for an experience they're they're there to get what they want and they they want it now and um that's really tough that's super tough yeah it's tough when you have a a customer that just won't won't uh they 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 they, they just won't be satisfied no matter what you do for them that's yep. definitely part of my experience yeah where you know do you, you you cook the same meal three times because they keep sending it back and you're just like at one point you just have to kind of cut your losses and say well you know what we're just going to comp your meal and send you <laughs> on your way because it's not a goddamn thing i can do for you here yeah yeah, yeah that's hard um you know and sometimes we'll get we'll get really negative reviews here and there on something and it's like okay is it us did we did we screw up is there something we need to look at um is there something we need to perform better or is it just the person um and i don't know where i picked this up but uh for years i i would ask myself uh wh or whenever someone gives me criticism i ask myself what is their intention uh i consider the source where is it coming from and then i ask myself can i learn anything from it because sometimes they're being shitty but i can still learn something from it uh, and if I can learn something and I can make myself better, I'm going to do it no matter what. Um, but usually those sets of that set of questions helps me make the most out of um, out of what any situation, you know, and, and try not to take it personally. Um, you know, unless I personally screw things up, which certainly does happen. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I guess. Sorry, I thought I heard something. I guess that's just part of the business. I mean, you know, we, yeah, we, we definitely screw up um, here and there, but yeah, you, you have to take what you can from it, but mm -hmm. and sometimes nothing you can take from it. Sometimes it's just like a wash, you know, yeah. sometimes yeah. It's like, well, the person is just a shitty person and they came in here and they're just not, they weren't going to have a good day, no matter what I could do for them. Right. So, right. But other times, you know, like you said, you can actually learn something from, it, you know, sometimes it might be a little hard to suss out exactly what that might be but yeah sometimes you can right right well so i'm curious uh as a, a career you know grinding it out professional chef you brought up a few famous celebrity chefs do you have like a favorite guy that you you really like or follow or uh or girl um, um i mean there's quite a few people that I that, that that have really inspired me. I don't say I'd have like a favorite, but like I mean, a lot of the uh, classical chefs like um, uh, Jacques Pepin, yeah, like um, like Marco Pierre, of course, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Um, uh, Ramsey to some degree, um, um, uh, Thomas Keller, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, uh, Balud, Daniel Balud, mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, so like a lot of the, a lot of those guys, what I, what I really like about them for the most part is that they came up through the kitchens when it was um, extremely hard to come mm-hmm. up through. and they, they, um, <clears throat> they, they, they tend to focus on um, few ingredients and the, the best ingredients and few ingredients mm-hmm. and the best preparation for those ingredients. Like those, that's, that's what, what inspires me. Like it, I'm not, I'm not blown out by like, like molecular gastronomy or anything like that. Like, you know, one of the reasons why, like, I admire you actually, Matt, as a chef is that, you know, you, you tend to use, you know, um, the, the, the basic ingredients that, that, that just, you know, it's just, it's the attention to detail. It's the, Mm -hmm. um, it's the, um, the, the basic preparations and the, the, you know, um, basically like 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 you said when you were there was elevating um the the cuisine you know what i mean mm-hmm. like the that type of cooking to me is is the most important because you know we're we're never going to be in in a time where you know um we're all making foams and watermelon pearls <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what i mean like that's never that's never going to be a thing yeah. You know what I mean? What we do for a living is so important because what we do for a living is life sustaining. Yeah. And, and, and life sustaining means getting the best from what you can, from the ingredients that are at hand. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And that's, yeah. that's what I respect most about cooking. So mm-hmm. the, those chefs that do those types of preparations and those types of that, that, that basic philosophy on cooking is, is really what turns me on as far as cooking goes. Hell yeah, man. That's awesome. And, and thank you for that compliment from the bottom of my heart, man. That means a lot to me. Um, yeah. Uh, I really, really, Marco Pierre White, man, like Jesus, I'm, what an amazing dude with an amazing career. And um, I really, I really like him, but have you ever heard of, uh, uh, I believe his name is Francis Wallman. Yeah. How do I know that name? Did he's, he a, write? he's a Patagonian chef, um, but he's, he's classically trained in, in French cuisine and he does all this stuff on open fire pits, like spitting whole sheep. And, and, and it's, it's just, it's so visceral and, and it's just like straight with the, 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 it's as close to just throwing a hunk of meat on a, on a, on a bed of coals, you know, and sometimes he even does that. And it's just, man, I, I just get so excited by the stuff that he's doing. And I, I really want to do more things like that. Um, I, I went out to uh to Standing Rock during that the pipeline thing years ago and uh I got to cook with a Navajo man and we we dug a, a pit to roast these pork shoulders and I was just so so fucking cool. Uh you know, we I, I rubbed them down with like a spice blend and honey and we put them in aluminum uh you know disposable hotel pans. And then this mm-hmm. guy brings like takes an awl out of his his like kit on his belt or something and he pokes holes in these aluminum pans like sandwiched together and then ties them together with bailing twine and then we we buried it under this fire for like six and a half hours or something yeah dude it was amazing and the whole time i'm sweating i'm like we only got one shot at this if we dig this up and it's not cooked like what are we gonna do you know we're we're trying to feed like 60 people like i so the whole time like oh man i hope this works and it was amazing it worked out great it was delicious and just that whole that whole experience was just like top tier for me it was just such a great time um but anyway that's a tangent i, I meant to say just that francis bowman's pretty amazing and you should check out his shit <laughs> yeah man send me a link <laughs> i will i will for sure yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool dude you just reminded me i when i was um working for all in good taste productions we used to um do this one preparation for a uh a whole um uh, halibut so we not a whole halibut a side of halibut so we mm-hmm. would uh we would get a side of halibut and we would have a six foot charcoal grill and we would use a natural like wood charcoal mm-hmm. and um we take the uh we we light the charcoal under the grill wait till it burned down till it was like a, about a medium high heat and then we would lay down like all kinds of like wet herbs like parsley oh. and like marjoram and you know whatever it was and then on top of that like dried herbs like um or the drier herbs like thyme and yeah. rosemary and lavender and shit like that and then 
we would take, so that would be like right on top of the grates of the grill. And then we lay the whole damn piece of salmon or halibut on top of that. And then we just like pull tin foil over the whole grill and wrap the whole goddamn thing up and then wait. <laughs> oh know? my God, that's amazing. So it was so nerve wracking because you never, you know, with, with charcoal, yeah. like, and it would be, it would be at a party for like 150 people. Right. Yeah. And I got like 45 pound piece of salmon on a, it literally takes up the whole entire grill. Yeah. And I'd be cooking it and you can't unwrap it. Yeah. You can't peek and check. No, there's no checking. And, you know, you have to hope that your charcoal is staying at decent heat and, you know, you do constantly, Oh my God, it was so nerve wracking to do <laughs> <laughs> I did it a couple of times, and it didn't really matter if it was the first time or the fifteenth time. I was yeah. still like, "Jesus Christ, it's not going to work out right." Well, yeah, because uh, there's so many X factors. Yeah, <laughs> it always worked out. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the cool thing was, then we take it off the grill. We get like two guys with like four spatulas, two two a piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can. We'd have to lift it up, and we put it. We had these gigantic six foot platters. We put the fish down on the platter, and we'd score it. And and there would still be some of like smoldering herbs underneath of it. Oh you know man, what I mean? it was so fly, dude. When it hit that's, the table, it's awesome. Like grilled up burnt lemon wedges on top and shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, it was so cool. That's Super that's cool. that's badass. And and I just I you know as much as a uh, thrill we get out of it, you put that shit in front of people and they and they get that 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 wide eyed you know like yeah. holy shit like what am I. And that's, that's where it's at. Like, that's, I mean, that's like the, the, the drug, you know, of like people's, people's amazement. And like, they're, they, when, when they're just, when they take a bite of your food and they just, they just get quiet and then like cuss, you know, like, fuck, you're like, yes, nailed it. I got it. (laughs) That's the payback. Yeah. I've been saying for a very long time that like, when you, like you, when, when, when you put out a meal and you like, just see everyone just satisfied and happy. And when they're done, they're satiated and they're just feeling good. You know, like that's where it's at. That's like the best drug. Yeah, That is yep. where it's at. Absolutely, like there's man. nothing more satisfying than that. I agree. A hundred percent brother. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, do you think much about the future? Uh, yeah, I'm going to die, man. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, me too. Than that, <laughs> well, no, yeah, not to be to be serious. Yeah, I think about the future a lot, man. I'm trying to, like, figure out a way where I can, like, um, you know, kind of back myself off my feet every single mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm 52, so I'm getting a little older. You don't, you don't meet many chefs much older than 50 years old. Yeah, you right. Know, so I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure out a way where I can like kind of work myself out of the kitchen a little bit, but also have a, an impact on the kitchen. Mm-hmm. What that looks like, I'm not really 100 percent sure yet, but you know that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you, man. I'm uh I'm a little younger than you. Uh, not not super much younger, but um, I, I I wonder about that that kind of stuff too. And I mean, that's what we're supposed to do in a in a skilled trade right as we get older and, and we have more experience we're supposed to transition out of that grunt work um you know and start sharing what we've learned and everything but uh i would i would hazard to guess that that that's challenging for you just like it is for me like i you know if dishes need done i want to jump i want to jump in the dish pit if uh if you know if if things need meased out then i want to mease them out like it's hard it's hard for me to just you know, and you saw it on Thursday as I, you know, when I was trying to do those, um, those main co- potato candies and I'm trying furiously trying to like dredge all of these potato candies and, and ganache and chef Tony came over and said, chef, what are you doing? I was like, I got to get these candies done. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like nearly frenzied with this. And she's like, um, why don't you ask for help? You don't need to do that. And I, and I was just like, what? She's like, I'll do that. I'm a, I'm a trained pastry chef. I got you. I'm like, huh? Like, I don't understand. I just it was well that's one of those things man that like you know that that you know we don't ask for help mm-hmm. enough yeah you know, what I mean? you, yeah. know we, you know as as leaders in our kitchens like we feel that like you know we have to be in control at all times and sometimes you know you you have to realize when you know you're in the weeds yeah yeah you need to ask for that help it, so that's an interesting thing what do you think about the changes uh 
you know, mental health wise in our industry over this over the years, especially I think it, it was really exacerbated by the pandemic and like people actually care now like you know you're not supposed to be on your feet for 16 hours at a stretch with no breaks and um you know and like you're not supposed to apparently news to me you're not supposed to just drink yourself under the table to put up to deal with your stress you actually are supposed to take care of yourself and like drink water and, and eat food and like yeah that's different right like that it, it used to be not that it, it, yeah, it's definitely changed. And like, even, even for me personally, like I, I have definitely worked towards finding more of a work-life balance. Mm -hmm. I used to never think about work-life balance was like a joke. Right. You know? like, like you're supposed to have a life too. Like, right. You know, right. It's work. It was, it's work, it was time for that. Yeah, no. And, but, you know, and, and I recognize that I try to recognize that for, uh, uh, people that work for me I, try, I really try hard you know to give them when I can to give them some kind of a, a balance you know and to try mm -hmm. to help them out and you know when, when we talk about this there's like we also have to talk about here's something interesting is that like uh, do you ever notice that as the chef that you tend to be uh, a part-time like psychologist oh yeah with you deal with people's issues um constantly constantly mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you know you're it's it's an interesting thing though like we we really spend a shit ton of time thinking about other people's lives and their mm -hmm. you know their priorities and their um the things that hold them back uh it's it's really a thing like that no one no one no one ever tells you like when you're in culinary school or just coming up in kitchens, however you end up mm -hmm. like at you're in kitchens, no one ever really tells you that you're going to spend a shit ton of time dealing with other people's problems. Right. Um, right. And you know, it's, it's, it's not, I'm not saying that this is like, it's like, the, it's the worst thing ever, you know, but you really have to like uh, learn empathy. Mm -hmm. you, know, you really have to learn a lot of empathy to lead a kitchen because yep. there's so many issues going on and especially as we were talking about earlier the the, the misfit toys yeah. that end up in the kitchens you right. know we have a lot of misfit toys that have a lot of misfit lives that are going on and we have to like you know understand that like say you know tracy who works for us like uh has a hard time making it to the bus in the morning because she has to drop her child off at daycare. Right. And, you know, this guy, you know, has a hard time making it till his next paycheck because of when his rent is due. So we may have to like lend him a little money out of the till to get right till next week type of thing. Right. So there's like all these issues we always constantly have to deal with that have absolutely nothing to do with cooking or food or kitchens, you know, yeah. but if we aren't responsible for them and managing them, then it, it, it affects our business. Right. Right. You know, well, and I've done a few things in my life. Uh, right after I left West Liberty, I was doing um, this gig as a, a wilderness instructor for at risk um, youth down in Canaan Valley in West Virginia. I don't know if you've ever skied down there or not. It's not as epic I as Breckenridge, but skied. yeah. yeah. Um, and it, and, it, and it was somewhat similar in that, in that environment, because we were taking kids out into the woods for, for 29 days at a stretch and it, it was pretty intense. Um, but the kitchen is kind of the same. And I, and I, I'm just putting this together now. Like these are just thoughts coming out of my mouth as, as I was listening to you talk, I was thinking though, um, it may be this intense nature of what we do uh, that really kind of peels back that veneer um, that, that we wear, you know, in normal social interactions when we're not, stress to the absolute max um and as we pull those those veneers back like things come up you know and 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 people are dealing with shit and and i do think you you've got to learn to uh you got to connect with people you got to you got to learn what motivates people yeah um you know sense of urgency is always a huge part of what we've got going on and yeah. um different people are motivated by different things um yeah yeah, and it's and it's up to you to to find out like where you know what motivates them and and how do you get the most out of them, you right? Know? Right. Uh, without with without also like you know damaging them or like you know hurting them or 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 right. putting undue pressures on them, you know. Right. 
it's that's that's like one of the most difficult parts. I think I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but you know, uh, one of the reasons why like I'm at Community Kitchen is my 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 real desire to like help uh, help people learn how to work in kitchens because I think like we talked about a little earlier was like you know like kitchens have given so much to me over my life mm-hmm. like the, the, they've sustained my entire life like from the time I was you know in my 20s and like a complete loser and had nothing to to right now um but I I've always had that desire and there was like uh one guy that that I I had that worked for me when I was at the sign center that you know was like slinging drugs and yeah. uh he would show up at work all the time beat up Mm-hmm. you know and he was constantly like having a hard time and he was terrible on the line he was, he was god awful and you know mm. and, and and i gave him my everything like i had like several like parking lot cigarette you know conversations with him like man on man to man yeah. like you, you like dude i can help you man just just stick with me man i mean, I mean you want to stop slinging drugs in the neighborhood you want to like stop getting jumped because everybody knows you have your drug money on you and you know like you you want a lifestyle yeah. that can sustain you and get you out of the situation you're in right like, just follow me man i will give you a career not only will i give you a career i'll pay you to to learn right right your career. and and that that ended up just not working out um unfortunately um i don't know what he's doing today but the point is like that that kind of like that kind of gave me like that like kind of kick to really like start thinking about like what cooking has done for me and what I can give back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's why I'm, yeah, I do. Where I'm at right now. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's really hard. Um, I, you know, I've been, I I've, I've given my all to, my, to, to staff and coworkers and uh, you know, I've been taken advantage of multiple times and I think I've, I've learned to set up um, probably some healthier boundaries but I don't want to like, I don't want to get hard. I don't want to like, I don't want to be a dick. I don't want to, I don't want to not help people, you know? Um, It's just learning how to help people in a way that doesn't hurt me. Um, And especially now that I have a family to worry about, like, it's not just about me anymore. Um, Right. It's not just about my business. It's, it's about providing for these people that I'm responsible for. And and I honestly I feel that same way for about my staff. Like I'm responsible for them. I'm responsible for providing for them. Um, I'm responsible to to you know make sure I can pay them as best as possible and make sure that every paycheck you know cashes and and uh, you know if they need something extra, um, you know if they need uh, a set of wheels or um, you know a, an advance or or whatever, like um, that that's on that's on me. But there's also a point where like okay, now you're asking for too much. Now, now you're, you're crossing lines um, and being comfortable with that level of conflict to be like, no, no, that's not okay. You can't, you can't do that. Yeah. And it's yeah. tough, man. It's super fucking it's tough. It's really hard to draw that line. Like, yeah. this, like you'll have like uh, a, like a person working for you that like sometimes, you know, you, you just have so much empathy towards them and you just, you want them to succeed so bad, but they, mm-hmm. they, just keep screwing you over <laughs> right. and at some point you know it, it's it's tough you know yeah. I, I tell people like uh I have told people before that like you know you can be the you you can be the the best the best cook I have you know you can be like the number one person that like works in this kitchen the you know superstar but if you don't show up on time mm-hmm. or if you you know continually burn food that you're cooking you're you're worthless to me you know right. what i mean you can't you, you could be the best cook in the world but if you're not showing up on time if you're not like following the rules like i gotta let you go right you know and, Dude, and re- reliability is probably the most important thing yeah you know and, and, and i mean in, in some ways less less than reliability but consistency is really nice <laughs> like if you're gonna fuck up all the time at least i know you're gonna fuck up all the time like don't yeah well, don't I know what go <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to ask you to make the pizza dough because I know right. you're going to fuck it up. Right? Exactly, exactly. I'll, I'm going to have you do the things that you know you're able to do, and and, and we'll just lower the expectations for that. But well, that's like part of what we were talking about with like being like a like a social psychologist. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's, it's like you, you know, you have to suss out what people are capable of and, right. and right. get the best out of them. I believe know? these and, days it's called setting them up for success. 
Oh, is that what they call it? I think that's what they call it. But yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know what, man? Mm, you're not going to make the pesto. You're going to make uh, the marinara. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, speaking of uh, of being responsible and providing, um, I'm, I'm new to this, but, um, you know, your, your oldest is 19 now? Now my oldest is 25. Holy shit. Yeah, bro. Damn. <laughs> so you've had a you've had a family the whole time you've been in this career um yeah basically um i started the well you know the, the reason i'm in kitchens is because uh i was walking around uh i moved to breckenridge with megan mm-hmm. in, um, 1996 um i i had never cooked professionally before and barely could cook an egg for myself at the <laughs> time um we got to Breckenridge. Of course, I didn't have a job. I was going to find a job. That was the idea when I got there. Did not have a job and was like wandering around town looking for something to do, mm. you know, basically knocking on doors, you know, because there wasn't the internet to look for right. employment at the time. And that's when I fell into uh, the kitchen at the Blue River Bistro. Um, Megan, at the time, uh, after three weeks after we, we moved to Breckenridge, we found out Megan was pregnant. So <laughs> about, I'd say three months after we moved to Breckenridge was when I started cooking for a living. So John was three months into gestation when I first started cooking. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. So yeah, basically cooking for me was like, uh, I was like, I have to do something mm-hmm. and, uh, because I know that this, this child is coming soon and, you know, I got, I got to find a way to make money. And, you know, it's like, like I said, it's sustained me since then, like yeah. cooking has been like the best thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. It really has. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And I, I, I feel that with you and I, 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 that resonates with me a lot. And, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, like, I felt like in, in that respect, exactly like cooking is the best thing and, and the, your devotion to cooking. Uh, it's almost like we're, we're two tuning forks and like we're hitting the same frequency, man. It's, 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 it's super cool. Uh, your sister says that you're wonderful and you fed, uh, fed our family all the time. <laughs> Love you, Jane. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's been weird for me. Like my son is two and a half, um, a man and I've been together for three years, a little bit better than three years now. And, um, uh, I said for years, man, uh, Jane says she loves you. <laughs> uh, I said for years, uh, after opening the restaurant, you know, and my, my first wife and I had divorced uh, partially because of the restaurant, you know, like, um, yeah. you know, we got into it together and she decided that she didn't want to do it anymore and, and wanted me to quit. And I was like, <laughs> I don't think, you know, who you're married to. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to quit. Like, and we tried to figure out a way to make it work. And even with both of us not being a part of it, and it just didn't. Um, and then I said for a very long time that I could not do this with a family. Uh, and I couldn't have, I mean, I was working 15, 16 hours a day six days a week. And on the seventh day, maybe only eight. Um, and there's no way I could have done it. And, and now uh, kind of concurrent with the pandemic, now I have a family and like, I have to figure out a way to make this work. Um, and I, I, I'm decently resourceful dude, but I don't know what else I could do that would feel right. Um, you know, right. like as hard as it is, um, as stressful as it is, you know, all the, all the cons laid out on a table, like I still would pick this every time. This is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. 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 I I feel the same way. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a calling. It's like, it's, I, I feel that there's nothing else that I'd be as good at. And and there's nothing else that would be also as like fulfilling and rewarding to me Yeah, as far as, you know, like it, it, it's just like, so fantastic that like i get to like you know sustain other people's lives while sustaining my own yeah you know what i mean this is something that will never go away yeah everybody got go ahead go ahead i was gonna say everybody gotta eat man like we're just we we what we do is like one of the most natural and one of the most like important careers that we could possibly have it's 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 better than being a priest. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Ah! Agreed. <laughs> well, and fulfilling is such a great word to throw in there, man, because um, 
you know, for like 20 years or so, I just fucked off and did whatever I wanted to. And it was super cool. I got to go to a lot of places. I got to see a lot of things. I got to do a lot of shit. Uh, and I, and I loved it, but it wasn't fulfilling. And when I dedicated myself to this, when I was like, you know what, this is, this is the thing. I think this is the thing. Like, uh, that fulfillment came in waves I wasn't even expecting. Right. That, yeah. I never expected it. I, I mean, it's, it's built to this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I've never, there's never like a time where I was like, I'm, you know, where I consciously thought like, I'm going to purposely continue to cook because yeah. it is fulfilling me or that I have this mission or like whatever, man. I never, never crossed my mind until like, you know, the last maybe, 15 years or so like I, I i started to like gain this appreciation for what we do yeah. you know it's so important it's such an important thing yeah uh, you know yeah. providing food for people is just an amazing opportunity to like i don't know just give away mm-hmm. uh, your 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 craft your love your, your you know your your passion mm-hmm. you know it's 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 amazing it's it's, yeah. it's so satisfying yeah, yeah, it it is it is amazing. Um, do you think uh, I hear the 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 sustaining people part? I hear the I hear that and that's that's very important to you. Is that do you think that's what it comes down to for you, or like for me? I I feel like it's almost this weird appreciation or or dedication like it's this need to give food its best chance to be its most amazing self does that make any sense yeah i feel you on that uh you know like i i want to take and, and that's what i loved about the menu that i did with you at the community kitchen was was like let's take these things that are not filet mignon and you know yeah you know french dutch ass potatoes or whatever and like let's take it elevate i love elevating things i love I love giving people the chance to engage in quality. That's a huge thing for me. I, um, I, I, I got that from Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. Uh, you know, I read that when I was a kid, when I lived in Pittsburgh, actually. And that whole central concept of that book is all about quality. And I, and I feel like, like that's the hook for me is to like, to, to give people the chance to taste something that is transformative. It's not just yeah. about feeding them for me. Yeah, no, it's it's not necessarily just about feeding people, but you, you're right. Like as far as like just uh, taking something that is just ordinary and 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 bringing it to, you know, bringing out the best qualities it has, yeah. you know, by yeah. by using your techniques that that you've learned is that that's really an important thing because like you know like you can think th- think about things like um like for instance like short ribs. Mm-hmm right short ribs like were like in the in the 80s like you know a dollar a pound right right i mean and now they're like 14 dollars right and it's um because they were they were an underrated item because no one really knew how to cook them right proper you know and now like now that uh we've learned to apply the techniques of of searing and braising uh and you know all of that to short ribs like now we know like the goodness that how great mm-hmm. they are mm-hmm. really are and that's just elevating a product to where you know i mean things like bacon for instance you know right pork, right pork belly you know used to be the shit that the the, the farmers threw away right you know right. they didn't they didn't care for it and and uh the you know that was back in the times where there were slaves and plantations and they, that the the slaves would end up with it and they'd make bacon out of it. And they were like, yeah. this is shit. And now everybody wants bacon. You know what no I mean? Doubt. Like, great. Who doesn't love bacon? Right. Right. I, I have to literally fight with my chef every dish we do. Like, well, we could add bacon to it or lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lemon's also awesome. Lemon bacon. <laughs> lemon bacon. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It is amazing, but we, we don't want to do the same trick every single time. Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, I mean that that yes, that like elevating like the 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 you know a humble a humble product into something that's like delicious and satisfying and fulfilling is like it's it's part of the art, it's part of the craft that we yeah. do. And it's, it's yeah, and I, and I I love how you know it's it's art craft. I love I love thinking of it as craft. I, I read a great book years ago called 
uh, trade craft as soul craft or something like that. It was about like working in a wood shop and, and things like that. But it's a very analogous to what we do in the kitchen too. Like working with your hands, you're taking a real thing and you're transforming it with skill. And mm-hmm. I just love that so much. Uh, you know, and there's, you know, how many times did we talk and bitch about math when we were working together this week? Like Jesus, yeah. math, math's fucking me again. Like math, you know, we got to use math so much and, and we got to, we got to take very abstract concepts and try to try to math them. And it reminds me of like trying to build a set of shelves inside of a log cabin, you know, where there's nothing straight level or plumb. And you're like, okay, I'm going to pretend it's here and work from that. You know, yeah. and there's a lot of that that goes on too. Um, uh, you know, Bourdain, Bourdain said that uh, the great cathedrals of Europe were not built by artists, but by craftsmen, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and that, that's something I think about on occasion is, is, you know, he's completely right about that. Like all, artists conceived it. Yeah. But craftsmen built it. Right. Right. Um, and and, and we're, yeah. we, we, we live in a, this wonderful, or we work in this wonderful amalgamation of all those things. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we are artists. We do, you know, we, we dabble with math and science and yeah craftsmanship uh, i mean we get to do so many things to make these these plates show up in front of people and when it is elevated and when we do get that oh fuck moment like even though they don't understand what all went into it they they get to taste it they they, they know it on a level that you can't argue with and, and that's one of the things i love about food too is it doesn't matter uh you know it doesn't matter what what you believe or what your faith is or, or or what your background is like if it's good food you can't deny that it's good food yeah and it brings people together it does absolutely yeah absolutely like, yeah that's that's one of the cool things about cooking is it, it totally brings you know people together like you can you know i don't know you can you can have people arguing and fighting and all this crap and shit like that. And you give them like a, a nice meal and you set it down in front of them and they're going to forget about everything that's going on. They're just going to eat. Right. Right. It kind of reminds yeah, me of, I, I think it was a Heineken commercial. Huh? Do you see that? I think it was a Heineken commercial years ago. They, they did this like social experiment where they brought people in uh, that were opposing on opposing sides of, of, a, of an issue. And they had them do a few tasks together. And then at the end of that, they outed themselves as like, oh, well, I don't believe this and I do believe this. And it was like, okay, now you can either go your separate ways or you can have a beer together. It was a great commercial. I'll have to dig it up and send it to you. <laughs> yeah. That, and um, and yeah. not every single time people were like, yeah, I don't agree with you, but I'll have a beer with you. Well, yeah, that's, that's, and that's the way it ought to be. It is, absolutely, <laughs> man. Well, yeah, I was just thinking like um, when, when, uh, when we put the entree out um, on Wednesday yeah. um, about how, uh, the room got really quiet. Yeah. Right after we put the entree out. And I remember thinking that's a really good sign. Yeah. That's a good you know? sign. When everyone, yeah. When you put the food out and everyone just <laughs> stops what they're doing and is just eating because they're like, this is so good. Yeah. You know and, I mean? it, and it, and just for everyone that, that wasn't there, obviously uh, the entree was an eye of round steak roast uh, with homemade steak sauce uh Appalachian macaroni and tomatoes and uh some expertly sauteed mushrooms and that's it yeah. it wasn't it wasn't squirrel foam it wasn't spherification no nope. it, it was basic peasant food thing. man it was well done peasant food peasant food yep that's yep. what i like yeah yeah and it it silenced the crowd yeah that was super <laughs> cool man amazing well brother it's been absolutely fantastic to talk to you and to work with you again man i really appreciate your time and uh, i look forward to the next go around because this definitely needs to happen again soon absolutely thank you yeah brother you have a wonderful night man i'll talk to you soon i'll send you those links all right matt thank you all right take care man love you bye buddy